We wake up from our nap late in the afternoon, feeling much better. We're not in great shape, but we can limp around like this. Clearing out the immediate area, we spot something strange. There's a little cocoon made of flesh, covered in ropey black strands. It looks like it's breathing slowly. We smash it. We're not taking any chances with meat monsters. We can get back up onto the roof of the gun shop. Climbing should be safer now that we're somewhat healed up. Looks like there's an apartment up here. We could maybe figure out how to pick this lock? We'd need a butter knife or something. And we'll have to look around for some wire. Maybe down here? Shoo, spider. There's a chemistry textbook down here. That could be really useful later. We can't carry it, but we'll scan it if that spider stays in the corner. On a hunch, we check out the water heater, finding out that there is clean water still stored inside. We can dispense some of it into our canteen. That'll keep us going for a while. We'll put some in these bottles, too. Okay, this schedule's basically broken. We'll switch to our baseball bat. There's some wire out here. Something over here is giving us the metal sawing quality. What is that? Hmm. Not sure. Well, we can craft our lockpick anyway.
Unfortunately, it doesn't look like we're getting anywhere. We are not proficient with lockpicks, and this is just beyond our ability. It's also taking a really long time. Fox body pillow. As the sun sets, we hear gunfire again. We have no idea where it's coming from, but we'd sure like to know. onto a roof trying to see if we can spot anyone. No luck. We circle back around to Kirk's house. May as well stop in to get those files. There we go. It's all safely on the drive now. We wander the home, looking over his stuff, wondering if it'll tell us anything about what kind of person he is. He's a gamer, it looks like. There's a set of Battle Hammer minis here. We decide to grab them. Maybe he'll be happy to see them. We're gonna need a bag if we want to take anything else with us. We recall that there was one in the basement where we crashed. I swear to God, Spider. Here it is. Let's get moving.
We start collecting our guns and checking out the zombies. Some of them might have useful stuff. We pick up some snacks, a lot of drugs, a new multi-tool, here's a two-way radio, and a Glock 22. Now we have something that can shoot all that 44 we we've been lugging around. Unexpectedly, we come across a hacksaw on one of the bodies. Now this is a lucky find. We can saw right through the window bars of the gun store, and then we're in. It's like Survivor Christmas. Right away we find a magazine on submachine guns, some mods, ammo pouches. We'll strap one of these on either leg. They should make it easier to loot this place. There's a Lee Enfield here, a British bolt-action rifle from World War I. It's an impressive weapon, but it uses 303 British, and that's not a caliber we're likely to find anywhere. We pass by a display of pocket pistols and toward the racks out on the sales floor. There's a Mini-14 here. This is a good gun. While this one only works in single fire mode, it's more accurate than a basic AR-15, which means it will tend to do more damage as we can hit more precisely with it. It doesn't use the standardized Stanag mags that we've been finding, but it's still really good at shooting 5.56. It looks like these gun racks are mostly locked up. We can probably just smash them, but we have no need of most of these guns, so let's be sensible and check out the merchandise first. There's an M1A here, which is a semi-automatic rifle from the 70s. It's chambered in 7.62x51, which we found a huge pile of on our first trip to Minot. And it's not even locked up! We can grab it right off the rack. We find a Remington 870 Express here, which could be a good replacement for our Mossberg. We don't have it on us to compare them, but there's no harm in grabbing it. We find a bunch of primer in the back. What could be in these other crates? We upgrade to a large tactical backpack first thing. That'll help us get more loot out of here. There's also a tack vest here. We were looking at one of these earlier. It's got these loops for holding shotgun shells that'll make reloading a breeze. There's a small shooting range here. A few shotguns lie discarded, but there's nothing especially exciting. We'll need to get a crowbar to get the rest of these boxes. We head upstairs to check out the apartment. There's a sleeveless spring suit in the bedroom. It doesn't fit, but wetsuits can be useful, so we'll grab it.
There's a workshop here, but it seems like it's empty. There's a safe in the back office and another behind the counter. That's where they must be keeping all the ammo. Let's get what we have so far back to the boat. Popping open the crates, we find more primer, magazines, and a few guns we can't really be bothered to care about. We still have that lockpick. Let's see about cracking the safe. The lock stumps our efforts. Hmm. Now, we are learning the lockpicking proficiency as we practice this way, but it would take days to even figure out the basics. It's certainly worth doing, but we want that ammo now. Unfortunately, something gets stuck as we work, and we find that we've succeeded in jamming the lock. Damn it! It doesn't take long to jam the other safe, too. There are a lot of empty magazines in these lockers. It's like they're taunting us. Frustrated, we beat on the gun safe with our crowbar, but it doesn't budge. We leave the gun store, dejected. We don't have anything powerful enough to break open the safes, and until we do, they're staying sealed tight. It's time to finish looting and prepare for the journey home. Hey, hey, a newspaper. Zombies. Whether they're all rioters or just a few, it is now undeniable. The dead walk among the living, adding to the ranks of the psychos ripping our country apart from the inside. Full photo evidence inside. Unfortunately, the reports were too little too late. We come away with more ammo, some food, batteries, and a military ID card. Interesting. It has a chip in it. Maybe it'll open something. There's more army gear lying around, but it's bulky and heavy. In the end, we decide that we've got enough stuff to haul back. There'll always be more soldiers.
Now it's time to figure out if we can even bring what we have with us. We'll have to start by dropping everything that we can stand to leave. We don't need these old cotton balls. We don't need this copper. We don't need both CZs. We can ditch this heat pack, this broken lock pick. We can scan all these books and leave them behind. Looks like we've done it. The mission is complete and we've got a lot of loot to show for it. There's no way Mellifera's been keeping count, but we've taken out 763 enemies. We decided to write a diary entry in our e-reader. Not that anyone will ever read it, but it seems like it might be important to keep track of our journey. We struggle to come up with anything to write. Constant pain, terror, and adrenaline speak for themselves in our memory, but it's a lot harder to express that in words. I took a kayak to Western Minot. It was a slaughterhouse. I must have killed over a hundred zombies and a wasp the size of a horse. We take one look around the area making sure we haven't left anything important. We can toss out some of these MRE extras. We don't need napkins or beverage bags, and we have tea at home. We start dragging the kayak back to the river, but a nagging doubt sets in. We did get the right USB stick this time, right? The software we need is definitely on this one. Just to be sure, let's rummage around until we find another. We copy the files from Kirk's computer again. All right, now we're sure that we have it. A giant cockroach skitters away as we drag our boat through the grass. And just like that, we're out of here. We rode halfway home before we realized that we left our new shotgun back at the store. Oh well, the 870 Express is nice, but it's pretty common. We'll probably find another one at some point.
The full moon and early dawn color the sky in lovely violet hues, promising a beautiful day to come. But suddenly we're swallowed up by a deep mist. We click our flashlight on to try and squint through the fog as we paddle. We pull our kayak up into the swamp, not far from where we originally embarked. Big slug. Eventually, we pass out of the mist. It's still too early to see anything well, but this is a lot better. Clouds roll in as we return to the mall, arms aching from hauling the boat. Yeah, it's like they missed us or something. Home, such as it is. We struggle to get the boat inside our hideout and then immediately start dumping all the crap that we've been carrying onto the floor. Before long, we're back in our comfy chair with a fire crackling in the brazier and all the loot in its proper place.
There's an open can of tomatoes that we idly pick at, using the last good leaves of lettuce as a sort of wrap for them. It's not particularly appetizing. Maybe we can do better. We decided to make sandwiches using the shelf-stable bread from the MREs, some sliced cheese, and the canned tomatoes instead. It's better? These are actually pretty nutritious, and most importantly, they're very calorie dense. We've lost quite a bit of weight recently. With the sun finally coming up, we decided to head out and find Kirk. It seems like we can't ever be rid of the zombies out here, but there's something worse lurking in the trees. Like a parody of an ape, it stretches limbs twice the length of its body to drag itself toward us. Let's try out this 40 Smith & Wesson. The X4 Storm is a great handgun in any caliber. It doesn't take long to clear the area. We find Kirk where we left him, still nursing his spider bites. Did you get it? Sure did. We toss it to him, and he plugs it into a laptop to check that everything's still there. Do you really want to stay out here on your own? You're still not looking too great. Kirk looks us over. We are covered from head to toe in stinking gore and bandaged wounds. Uh-huh. And you're, what, thriving? Minot was totally overrun. I had to kill hundreds of them just to get to your house. But I pulled it off, didn't I? And there's plenty more ammo where that came from. <sighs> Honestly, I didn't think you were going to do it. I'm actually pretty impressed that you put your life on the line for this. I don't think there are that many of us left. We should stick together. Yeah, I think you're right. You said you were in the mall? Yep. Well, lead the way then. Unless you want to stay here. And with that, Kirk joins our party. Let's try talking to him. NPCs tend to get a bad rap in this game. Except for a few bugs, their AI is actually pretty decent. 
It's just that all the settings are buried in nested dialogue menus that don't always exactly say what they're going to mean. We're going to give Kirk some simple instructions that will prevent him from running off on his own and getting killed. He has no armor and he's probably still poisoned, so we need to protect him. Turning off ranged weapons might also be a good idea, but in most cases this setup is enough. He'll only attack enemies that he can reach without moving. He'll follow us at about four paces even if there's an enemy nearby. He won't try to use grenades, and he won't shoot anything if we're in the way. We'll also open up his miscellaneous rules and set his basic behavior. Essentially, we want to pretty much tell him to not do anything on his own. He won't pick up items, he won't bash obstacles, he'll only sleep when he really has to, he'll keep quiet unless something drastic is going on, he won't bash corpses, he won't close doors, he won't go investigate sounds on his own, and he won't open doors. This is basically how you want to set your NPCs at all times unless you know what you're doing. You can adjust a few behaviors as needed, such as letting them engage enemies a bit more aggressively, but for the most part this setup is good from getting them to point A to point B without getting killed. With that done, let's take a look at his stats. Kirk, as it turns out, is sort of the opposite of Mel. He's a bit smarter than average, but physically he's sort of a couch potato. However, he's highly skilled in general combat, and with six marksmanship, he shoots like a professional. He really is a gamer through and through. He's got a smattering of general crafting and life skills and five ranks of social, which makes him way better than Mel at talking to people. As for his traits, tough gives him extra HP while strong back improves his carrying capacity. The standout is high adrenaline, which can kick in when he's badly injured to give him a huge burst of speed and strength. Unfortunately, he's asthmatic and has the jittery trait. Jittery kicks in whenever he's hungry or affected by stimulants, and it will tank his dexterity, massively reducing his effectiveness in combat. Asthma can be managed with an inhaler, but it's certainly something to watch out for. All in all, it paints a picture of an intelligent, likable guy who probably used to spend too much time online and too little time in the gym. Under pressure, he might crack or he might explode with nerd rage. Time will tell, but with three melee and six marksmanship, we really shouldn't underestimate him. Hmm, for some reason he's not following us. Ah, here's why. He has a trait that's supposed to be invisible and is supposed to go away when you recruit him. For some reason it's doing neither. We'll go into the debug menu and remove it. There we go, no problem. Now he's behaving appropriately. Back to exploration. We head deeper into the cave, brushing back thick cobwebs. But what are we doing? I'm not leaving a cool cave half explored. Unsurprisingly, we find another spider. It manages to bite us in the foot before we can shoot it. At least we know the poison isn't lethal, it just hurts a lot. There's a little track lower in this cave. They must have run a minecart over it at some point a long time ago. Bits of limestone and white crystal litter the floor, catching the flashlight's beam as it moves across them. Well, now we know. Our foot throbs painfully as we hike back across the parking lot. Thankfully, it's a short trip. I've cleared most of the main area out, but you've got to watch out still.
We gun down a zombie cop, hoping he'll have some ammo. He does. We score a few buckshot shells along with a two-way radio. We decide to hand one of our radios to Kirk. This way we can keep in touch even if we're not close by. Hideout's back here. Damn, bitch, you live like this? 